Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen and welcome to my kitchen. My kitchen, but also I share it with my dogs, as you know, and Norman joins me and he is sleeping at the door, um, going up to the garden porch, <laughs> enjoying, enjoying an afternoon nap. And today I'm very excited. And in fact, I've been looking forward to sharing this recipe with you because it was inspired from my recent trip to Paris this past spring. And I had this most delicious plat du jour in the seventh arrondissement. And I said, I've got to figure out a way <laughs> to make this at home and share it with you because it appears so decadent in the sense of its detail and its artistry but the ingredients are so everyday, simple, and seasonal. I thought, I can do this. Now, it definitely isn't going to be at the level of the chef who this restaurant is named after. The restaurant or the cafe was Cafe Lignac, L-I-G-N-A-C, and it's in the 11th arrondissement, about two blocks, three blocks away from the Champs de Mars um, and the Eiffel Tower, La Tour de Fel. And it just opened this past October, so it's been open about a year now, and it is Chef Cyril Lignac's restaurant. And I sat down at the bar, my mother was with me on this trip, and we were having dinner our last night in Paris, and I said, what's your plat du jour? Because Susan Herman Loomis always taught us, and in fact her most recent cookbook is called Plat du Jour, ask them what their plat du jour is. And usually it's on a chalkboard or a bulletin board somewhere at the entrance. But if it's not, ask. It's usually gonna be seasonal. It's usually gonna be something the chef is experimenting, trying. So it's something they, they're inspired to create. And it's usually really good. <laughs> all right, um, so let's get started. Norman's kind of waking up over here. And all it is, we're gonna use cod. Okay, you can also use halibut or any white meaty fish, flaky fish. 
We're also going to, so we're gonna put the cod on top of a carrot puree and finish it with a simple white wine butter sauce with a spritz of citrus. That's it. Here's a picture of the meal I enjoyed at the cafe. As I was working on this recipe this spring and the summer, I had made it a few times and I asked, um, I asked my two friends that I hadn't seen in a long time, a wife and a husband, if they wouldn't mind coming for dinner. I had some recipes to try and I was really looking forward to catching up with them. And so we had multiple courses and this was quite the hit. And again, so simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare the carrots. All you have to do is steam the carrots in butter and a little water, because it's steamy, salt and pepper, that's it. So we're gonna start with the carrots. We're gonna make this a serving for two people. So for two people, you probably need, I have medium sized carrots here. Um, these are all fresh from the market. You want the freshest tomatoes you can find because you want that lovely and natural sugar that the carrots provide, which just surprise our palate sometimes when we th think we're eating vegetables. But the soft subtleness of their sweet flavor is what makes this dish quite special. So I have about nine minis, or I have about nine medium-sized carrots here. You really just want to fill the base of your um, cast iron pan. You're gonna chop it up roughly once you get the ends off here. And I've already peeled the carrots. Just a, a rough peel. Okay. But rough chop. All about the same size because you want them to cook about the same as they're steaming. So I'm cutting them about an inch thick. If you wanna cook it more quickly, you can, you can slice them a little finer. Okay. And just a reminder of how to hold your knife. This is something that's taken me a while because different people will tell you different things, but I trust my chefs in France. And so uh, Susan Herman Loomis, when she saw me holding my knife one time, she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, I was taught this way by a chef and I'm not gonna say where, but not in France. And she said, no, that knife blade needs to be basically part of your finger. So you grab the blade with these two fingers, not do not do this. No, 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 no. You want control. It's like a finger. It is like your index finger. So you're holding it like this. And that's the simple and simple way, simple key to keep in mind. And also the one mistake a lot of people make. It gives you so much more control. If you're like this, you actually don't have as much control and you're likely to cut yourself, which I have done. Not recently and not for a very long time. And I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> All right, almost done here. You're gonna want about a medium to large um, skillet. You also want something that you can put a lid on, all right? So I just put a plate on top of this, but if you have one that has a lid, even better. All right, so now that you put your carrots into a skillet, you wanna make sure that skillet has a lid and I'm just gonna use a plate. And we're gonna go over the stove here in a second. You're gonna want some water, you're gonna want butter, unsalted butter, and you're gonna want salt and pepper. That is it and I'll meet you over at my stove. All right, and one of my favorite places in my house, the stove top. All right, so I have turned this back burner onto medium heat and I'm going to put about two tablespoons of unsalted butter just to get it melted in with the carrots. The heat's starting to come up there. While that is melting, get yourself a half a cup of water, find your salt, and your freshly ground pepper, because you're gonna be adding that in a short second. This is the most simple way that adds a bit of uh, luxury in its look to serving vegetables. Vegetables can be roasted, as we know, I do that all the time, and they can be blanched, they can be, they can be so many things, but when you steam them, it enables, as we did last season, you may remember that we made celery root puree for our scallops. We're applying the same skill of steaming to the carrots. All right, so my butter is starting to melt. Yum. 
Again, we're just, we're, we're not entirely sauteing the carrots. We just want the carrots and the butter to commingle before we start steaming them. Mmm. All right, so now all of the butter is melted. The carrots have a little bit of a glisten to them. They've got a little bit of that butter kiss on them. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is season them with salt and pepper. Okay, okay, a good pinch of each. Okay, you can start to hear that sizzle. Now, I use a lid that's simply a plate. You're gonna wanna find your lid to your um, skillet. And you're gonna add the water, half a cup. You're gonna bring it to boil before you cover it. So let's add the water. We're gonna increase this to boil. Once it boils, we reduce it to medium heat so it's simmering only. And we do that for 20 to 25 minutes. Basically what you're waiting to see to determine if it's done is if you can put a fork into the middle and it can come out fairly easily. You don't want them to be mush. Our food processor is gonna do that for you. I mean, you want them to be cooked through. Okay, so that is cooking. Once it starts boiling, which it is, reduce it immediately to medium, so it's at simmer. Cover it. Set your timer. I'm gonna set mine to 20 and I'll check and see what it is. And we just leave that on the back burner. We let that do its thing. Now, we're gonna start cooking the cod. So cod is, is a great fish to use for this dish. Now, when I sat down and enjoyed this in Paris, I honestly cannot remember the type of fish it was. It was not one I'd ever had before as far as the name, but it reminded me of cod or halibut. I have cooked this recipe with halibut and it's just as good. In fact, it was quite special. Can't always afford halibut. <laughs> so cod though, it is just as good. It's just as good. The key is how you cook it. So, so we're going to season our cod. Here, I'm salt and pepper. Okay. Now, we're gonna put this skillet to medium heat. Perfect. We need our butter because we are gonna cook this lovely cod in beautiful butter. And we're gonna baste it as it cooks. That is the secret to making sure it's cooked well, not overcooked, has flavor throughout. So as soon as this pan comes up, we'll put the butter in. All right, so I'm gonna put a tablespoon to two tablespoons in here. Do not be stingy with your butter. Again, the butter is going to flavor your cod. Let that melt down. While you're waiting for the carrots to steam, making sure that's on simmer, not boil. <laughs> um, make sure you have your preferred wine, whether it's a white wine or a rosé or champagne, whatever it is you're having, make sure it's in the fridge chilling because we're going to be adding some of that wine, first of all, to the sauce, but then you're going to immediately want to enjoy this dish with a glass of cool, crisp wine that is either white or rosé. All right, our butter is nearly melted. Move it all the way around that lovely pan. Oof, smell it. Okay, so we're gonna put the seasoning side down. Again, medium heat, you don't wanna speed through the heat, the cooking process here. Season the other side now. And what I like to do is to make sure I have enough to baste. I'm gonna put another tablespoon in there. So making sure this remains on medium heat. You don't wanna speed through cooking your fish. You wanna slow cook it. Depending on the thickness of the fish, I wouldn't leave the stove. I would I would watch it. You, you probably are gonna cook it maybe, maybe three to five minutes on the first side. Especially when we start basting it, you're gonna to have to be here anyway. And then the second side, you'll cook for just about one or two minutes less. But again, it's all about basting. That's gonna allow the whole piece of fish to cook more evenly. And all we, what I mean by basting is you're just taking, you're just taking that melted butter and you're just dripping it on top of the fish. So it's actually getting baked or cooked, I should say, 
So it's actually getting cooked on the top of the fish and all the way around the fish while it's cooking on the bottom. And I just do this the whole time almost. It, it gives me the opportunity to really watch how that fish is cooking. I might step away for 30 seconds or so. That's not gonna hurt it, but because you want your fish to be undercooked, if it's gonna be anything, you do not want it overcooked. You can always change the undercooked problem because that's not a problem. Cannot change an overcooked fish. And this is just fun. You can already see the meat turning a slightly white um, opaqueness to it. That means you're in the right direction. Almost ready to flip it. Oh, so simple. And again, what I like about this dish is while it does appear to be complicated on the end when you see the finished result, I, you know, I'm doing the carrots right here, I'm cooking the fish, and then as soon as they're, they're done steaming, we'll puree them. I'll make the sauce, which is even simpler. And that's it. 30 minutes, you've got your meal. And it's an impressive meal. And I encourage you to have it for yourself alone because you are worth it. And then, once you get it perfected to how you like to do it, you can impress your guests or your family, your friends, whomever you're sharing your meals with. So, we're gonna flip it. Oh yeah, make sure you have enough butter in there and make sure you put it on top of the butter. Yeah, it's already getting flaky on the bottom. So the bottom is beautifully cooked. I'll show this to you. So this second part is not gonna take as long. So continue to baste. You definitely don't want that translucent that we saw there or see there on the bottom left side that needs to be cooked. But this other side is done basically and we don't wanna overcook it. <laughs> You're so close. And like all seafood, when you take it off the heat, it's still gonna cook, or like meat as well, any meat, it's still gonna cook. You have the residual heat while the meat is cooling down, it's still cooking. So keep that in mind when you think that, oh, it's gotta cook a little longer. It may not. And this also, the basting, also lets the flavor seep down into the entire fish. So all this butter is not just on the outside, it's going into the inside of the fish. <laughs> and so every bite will be delicious. Mm. Looking good. Looking good. I'm gonna grab a plate for that. One time, I like to sit at the bar sometimes if I'm at a nice restaurant um, and watch the chefs cook or the sous chefs cook. And I remember one time, and I, I just you just watch them and you're like, why are you doing that? What's the reason for that? Um, and this simple basting, I actually think I watched this on um, a cooking program. It wasn't about how to cook something, but they were showing just this one restaurant and what they served. And the chef was talking them through this, but I've seen cooks and chefs do this so many times. The basting is just the simplest way to elevate the flavor profile of your dish. Oh, this is so good. And I'm loving this. So I'm pushing down a little bit and it's looking almost done. Mm, a lot better. You can see why halibut would work just as wonderfully on this with flakiness. So I'm gonna call this done, okay? And you just, again, push down. You're, you're gonna feel some density in the middle, but you shouldn't um, feel it entirely being cooked through. That's too much. So the key is seeing the flakiness occurring on the exterior edges, which we're seeing. No opaqueness on the bottom side, the last side you're cooking. But you still want some movement. Ah, look at that. Wonderful. Now, normally I would say keep the pan and all the renderings. It's gonna make a bold, beautiful sauce. 
but I actually have done this a couple different ways. I've done it that way, but then I've also done it in a clean saucepan. And the reason was for aesthetics. Aesthetically, your sauce is going to sit on top of the puree. If you don't mind it being a little dirty, so to speak, with the fish um, remnants, then go for using this pan to make the sauce. But if you want the sauce that you saw in that picture from the cafe, you're gonna wanna make the sauce separately. And that's what we're gonna do today. But again, no, you can do the same thing I'm gonna do in this pan. You can do it right here, right now in this pan that just cooked this beautiful cod. All right, let's make the sauce because we still have eight minutes on the steam here, all right? Okay, first we need to open our white wine. I suggest using a dry wine um, because the sweetness is going to be in the carrots and you don't want to compete with that sweetness in the carrots. So the wine is ready to go. The actual base of this sauce is the butter. So we want two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna put our burner on for us, medium to small saucepan. You could probably do this in a small saucepan. Okay, over medium heat. Get the butter in there first. And while the butter is melting, go ahead and slice off about a fourth of the, the lemon. And you will juice this. Now, if you want a juicer, you can to make sure the seeds don't go in the sauce. But I just catch it in my hand. Have this ready to go. Get a whisk candy. The carrots are doing well. Okay. Okay. You want that butter entirely melted and it needs to be an unsalted butter. Now this is again for two people. You can always increase the amount of sauce, the amount of carrots for more servings. Okay. Now I put two tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna put about one to two tablespoons of white wine. And I'm gonna bring this up to simmer. So you're gonna see some bubbles simmering. You're gonna smell your wine. So you want a wine you wanna drink. So it's simmering now. Let's turn that down a little bit. This is gonna go in last. The lemon goes in last. I'm gonna get this a little bit thick. Not a lot though, it's just mainly reduction. Getting the alcohol out of there. We have three minutes on the carrots, but I just want to take a peek and see how they're doing. Oh yeah, they're actually done. Beautiful. Okay, so how do we test that? Grab a fork. Look how it just goes right in. Boom. These are done. I'm going to turn it off and I'm gonna put them in my food processor to cool. I'm not gonna make it yet, I'll do that with you. But for right now, because I wanna take them off the heat, I want all the sauce with it, all the butter that's there with it, I'm gonna put that in the food processor so I don't lose it in the pan, I want it in the food processor. It's looking good. Perfect. So all of the goodness, all of the carrots went into the food pro processor. As soon as the sauce is done, we will scoop back over there and finish this dish. All right, we're in the middle of the sauce making here. I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of butter because you want the flavor of the wine, but you don't want it to lead the way. You want it to complement. The citrus and the wine are complementing, they're dancing together. The butter is kind of the showroom. It is why you go there. You want butter in your sauce. <laughs> so this is where, just through my taste testing, I found I put too much wine in one time. Um, I put too much lemon in one time. I thought I needed a lot of lemon. Did not need a lot of lemon. But this is also the difference between following a recipe and becoming a cook in your own kitchen. You're gonna wanna taste test this as you go. All right, so when you think you've got it to the consistency and the flavor you want, take a spoon and test it, and that's what we'll do. It's hot. I'm 
taste in it before I put my lemon in. This needs more butter. And this is per this is the timing is working out as I had hoped it would. You do want the carrots to cool for about 10 minutes, but you don't want to lose the butter in the sauce that came from the steamy. So while you're, while you're making the sauce over here, you leave that in the food processor for the 10 minutes it needs to bake. So you leave it in the food processor for those 10 minutes. Okay. I'm gonna taste one more time before I put the lemon in. Mm -hmm. It's getting better. Okay. Now squeeze a lemon in. I don't have any seeds in this one. Keep tasting, keep tasting. Add a little, add a little. Don't add a lot, always just add a little and then you can always add a little bit more. The consistency is where I want it. Mm. Notice I didn't put a lot of lemon but there is just enough lemon in here to let me know that there is a citrus flavor profile, which is lovely. Okay. This is also why you wanna cook the sauce in the order we did it, because we want it to stay warm while you prepare the, the rest of the details and then you immediately put it over the puree. Okay, so now we're gonna move over here and we're gonna plate everything up. We'll make the puree together with the carrots and this is gonna just knock your socks off. <laughs> I'll meet you over here. All right, so the carrots have cooled enough. They're not gonna be cold. You don't want them cold. You want this dish to be warm. And you're gonna add another one to two tablespoons to this. Add a little bit of salt. Add a little bit of freshly ground pepper. And you're going to puree this. Now I can smell the carrots. Oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. What you want to do at this point is determine the consistency that you want. Now, as you can see from the picture when I ate this and enjoyed this in France, this was a very fine puree, very fine. It's gonna taste the same one way or the other. <laughs> it's up to you. But if you want it really fine, you're probably gonna to have to stop the food processor, sh uh, scrape down the sides, with the spatula, give it another pulse. And then we're gonna do it one more time. It's getting really good on the underneath. The top part is getting worked up. I wanna get everything nice and smooth. The first thing I wanna do is put the puree on the plate or the bowl. And this is where the artistry can happen can make a little wave here if you want. You do want a bit of a, a river where the sauce can go. So make a bit of a canyon somewhere in between. Now this has been really nice for the fish to rest because it continues to cook. So this is actually going to be two servings. So we're gonna cut it in half. Oh, it falls apart so nicely. And we're gonna put Right on the end there, beautiful. You still want the sauce to be warm because it's butter and it will harden. <laughs> now, right into that canyon. Yeah. Okay. Pour yourself a little more of that Chardonnay or that dry white wine you have made the sauce with. You know, fancy food like this appears fancy, but it's actually very simple to make. As you saw, there weren't that many ingredients. You can go to the market and get your carrots. When your fishmonger has some fresh cod or halibut or any white flaky fish, pick it up and come home and make a really good meal for yourself or for those you love but I wanna to speak to eating and dining with your own company. I do this every night. I thoroughly love it. it. It punctuates the end of a good day and makes it great. I dance in the kitchen. 
with regards to just thoroughly enjoying being in this space. And I'll often turn on classical music while I'm cooking. In fact, I have a symphonia for you. Check out Domenico Scarlatti's Symphonia No. 3 for oboe. As you know, if you've read my most recent book, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, I share a lot of different compositions for listening in the petit plaisir category. And oboe is one of my favorite instruments. And this one, especially the first movement, will get you hopping and smiling and just encourage you to dance in the kitchen with your food. But we have to try this. So let's get a fork okay. and try this ensemble. And I love this fish. It's flaked perfectly. So let's get one of those flakes, maybe two. Get some of that carrot puree and sauce. Mm. That's what I remember in Paris. That is what I remember. Something so simple, but full of flavor. I cannot help myself. <laughs> mm. So good, so good. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoy your day. Enjoy your food and enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Bonjour.